Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, flatten nested list or iterator. We're given a nested list of integers and each of the integers actually is like this object nested list and it can either be a actual integer like one or two or three or it can be an array of other nested uh, integers. So like this could be a list of one, two, three, or it could actually have other nested lists like one, maybe something like this. And basically the layers of nesting are arbitrary. Like it can be uh, even more nested. This could have a list of lists and that could have a list of lists as well. So that's something we have to keep in mind. So in other words, there's kind of some type of recursive nature to the structure of this data. Now, knowing this, we want to implement an iterator for this uh, list. It's going to be pretty simple. It's just going to support two methods. One is going to return the next integer in the list. So assume we had this list. Think of it in a flattened way. It would look like one, two, three. Imagine the structure was a little bit different. Like here, we have another list, and maybe that has a list as well, three, four. So what is this uh, going to look like when we flatten this? Basically, we iterate through it from left to right. Here, we see we have a one. Then here, we see we have a list. So we're going to go through that entire list before we move on to the next position. So here, we would get a two, a three, then move on to the next. And then here, we see a three again. And then the next spot, we go one layer in again. And we see this list just has one value, four. Then we pop out of it and then we're done with this, and then we're done with the entire list. So our iterator should return the values in this same order. And also, we are going to support one more method called has next, and it's gonna return true if there still are some integers remaining in our list, and false if not. So the simplest way, as you can imagine, is to basically take this nested list and convert it to a flattened list because once we do that, it's pretty straightforward to just iterate over this. We could just maintain a single pointer like I and just iterate over this. And that's pretty much what we're gonna do to solve this problem. But if you're still not convinced that this is a recursive problem, let me try to explain it to you. And I like to do so with pictures. So think of it this way. Let's think about this example that we have here on the left. As we are iterating over this, we see that the first value is a list. It's one, one. And this list is made up of two like actual integers, each which is one. But the original list has another child as well. At least that's what I'm calling it, because as you can see, we can visualize this with a tree. So next we have two here, and we have one more child, a child here, which is a list. Again, it's one, one, and that can be decomposed into its two children, one, one. So you can imagine that these could be nested as well. Maybe we had a list here and then we can keep going. So basically, the easiest way to think about this is in terms of trees. This is how we're visualizing it. And when you do that, you realize that, yeah, this is a recursive problem. What do you think is the base case with this recursion? You tell me. There's going to be a base case and there's going to be a recursive case. What's the difference between these two cases? Well, the base case is when we have an integer. The recursive case is when we have a list. Pretty simple, right? And notice all the leaf nodes are just integers. We just go over these from left to right and we literally have the flattened version of this nested list. So that's pretty much the entire problem. Once you can realize this, to be honest, you can solve the problem in like two minutes. Now, in terms of time complexity, we're pretty much just iterating over this list. So it's going to be big O of N, where N is the number of values in there. In terms of time or space complexity, we are going to basically be creating a copy of this. So that's also going to be big O of N. We're going to create a flattened copy of this. So now let's code this up. So before I even start coding, the first thing I want to show you is this nested integer interface, because in my opinion, at least, this is actually the hardest part of this problem, just making sure you're using this thing correctly. So each nested integer is an object. We know it could either be an integer or it could be a list. 
and we have this method for us to figure out which it is. It'll return true if this is an integer, and if it's not, then it must be a list. If it is a integer, there's a method for us to actually get that integer. If it's a list, there's a method for us to get the list. And when they say list here, just recognize that this is an array of nested integers. So a nested integer is basically like a wrapper interface around these two values, these two potential values. So now, knowing that, let's code this up. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to write out the, basically the high level code. One, I'm going to have a stack. That's where I'm going to put the flattened values of the nested list. I'm going to do so with, let's say, a DFS. That's what I'm going to call it. And we're going to pass in the nested list into that DFS. This nested list is an array of uh, nested integers. And after we do that, I'm actually going to reverse the stack like this stack dot reverse. And the main reason I'm doing this, I might as well show it to you is because when we return the next integer with our iterator, I mentioned earlier, we could just have a pointer and just shift it every time. And that's perfectly valid. We can do it that way. But alternatively, we can also have a stack and then just pop values from there. So we can return self dot stack dot pop. And that's the reason I'm also reversing this, because if we're popping, then we want to go through the values in the actual order, not in the reverse order. So that's why I'm reversing this. In terms of has next, that's also going to be pretty easy. All we have to do is return is the length of the stack a non-empty or non-zero. So we can just return length of the stack. To make it a bit more explicit, though, I'll just say is the length greater than zero. I think though, just returning the length would probably also work, but I'm actually not 100% sure. So now the only thing left for us to do is write out that DFS function. So uh, define it down here. It's going to take a parameter. I'm just going to call it nested for short. It's the nested list. And we're not even returning anything from this DFS. The only job of this DFS is to populate the stack. And since this is recursive, it's easier to just populate the stack rather than actually return something from this DFS. So what are we doing now? Remember, we're basically creating a branch in our decision tree for every value in the list. And we don't even know how long the list is. So we're just going to iterate over it for n in nested. And we know there's two cases, two very simple cases. Either n is an integer or it's not an integer. And if it is an integer, that's very simple. It's our base case. We can say self.stack.append this integer. And if it's not, then this is the recursive case. We say self.dfs uh, pass in n as the uh, new nested list. But there's a small bug here, and that's kind of why I said that the hardest part of this problem, or at least part of it, is this interface, making sure you're using it correctly. Remember, when we were uh, calling this DFS, we were given a actual list, an array of nested integers. That's why we're able to iterate over this like this. But in each item in that nested list is going to be a nested integer interface. Even if this else condition is true, we know that it's not an integer, it's a list. That doesn't mean the type of it is actually a list or an array. For us to actually get the, the, the array version of this, we have to call get list here before we pass that parameter in. And similarly, when we append to the stack here, n is an integer, but it's still wrapped around the nested integer interface. So we can also here say get integer so that our stack actually contains the integer so that when we pop it, it's actually returning the integer. So that's pretty much the whole code, though I notice a bug here in self stack. Uh, we're not calling anything. We're just uh, referring to this member variable and getting its length. So this is the entire code. Now let's go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. One thing I will quickly mention, though, is I ran the code without this part, without calling get integer. 
And I'm pretty sure this pop method in that case is not returning an int, it's returning a nested integer. And I noticed that this code actually passes as well. So I'm not sure, maybe uh, the leak code test case, as you can see here, it also passes. I'm not sure uh, what's going on or if it's just early in the morning and I'm not understanding something, but that's kind of confusing to me. Let me know if you have any thoughts on that. But if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.